Hello chess friends and welcome to the Zard of Chess channel and welcome to a spectacular game in which I think again many many basic chess principles will be broken. Welcome to a spectacular game played by Stolfish 16 against Ruby Chess in a wild Reti opening. And in this game I think you witness again very very spectacular crazy ideas especially of course from Stockfish side Stockfish in one moment will even secure the king on a4 Stockfish will castle sort of its own king on a4 very very crazy game a rate opening and simply that i've never seen in my life put your seat belts on and again enjoy in a wild attacking game performed here by Stockfish 16. so let's see now what happened with the white pieces the fish opened with move knight you have three we have d5 by ruby chess and now after move c4 we have now the amazing rate opening we have now the advanced variation by ruby uh expanding here in the center of the board creating of course space advantage uh here in the center of the board and Stockfish continues now with an early flank flank attack with the move b4 now basically there are two concepts i think you can play c5 or you can play f6 e5 like ruby chess did i wanted to show you a little bit of theory if for instance c5 happens this is now the so-called michel gambit I would not recommend you here to play something like uh, b takes c5. If that happens, black has, I think, a solid game after knight to c6. You play something like g3 and e5, and I think uh, black has solved many, many positional problems, will eventually take out the pawn on c5, and I think uh, this is a pretty solid position for black. I think black gained equality in an early state of the game for sure. What you should do uh, after move the c5 here is to play really in sort of a gambit style. You can maybe choose this, to play the so-called the reversed Blumenfeld gambit if you have played maybe the Blumenfeld gambit with the black pieces uh, I think it's a pretty solid opening uh, but even in a reversed way when you play it here with the white pieces you are playing basically always with an extra tempo I think now after something like um, C takes uh, uh, first first of all D takes E3 and after uh, F takes E3 and C takes B4 after move D4 the position gets really really spectacular white lost the pawn but has I think here powerful center uh, with these three mobile pawns that are rolling in the center of the board or you can maybe choose to play um, instead of this move e3 you can play in sort of a banco gambit way uh, with the move g3 then after something like i don't know d takes c5 you can uh, further expand here with the move a3 you play bishop to g2 and in one particular moment you will get your pawn back i think the banco gambit itself with the black pieces is really cool opening uh, but now again as i said you're playing it's sort of in, in, in a, a plus one tempo way you're playing it uh, in reverse with the white pieces so it's also i think quite quite an interesting position but okay that was a little bit of theory uh here uh, the ruby chess engine played now the move f6 wants now to expand wants now to support simply the pawn on d4 with the move e5 stockfish continues with d3 fixes the structure in the center now we have e5 which protects the pawn but also uh attacks the pawn on b4 stockfish protects it we have now the move a5 uh by ruby uh, Ruby is searching here for clarification in the center of the board and now after move b5 Stockfish has now at least uh, here space advantage so Ruby chess has a slightly better position in the center of the board but Stockfish has an expansion on the queen side we have knight to e7 by Ruby chess e3 Stockfish is immediately challenging now the pawn on d4 we have now d takes e3 and after f takes e3 again white has a certain pawn mobility as a possibility to break and enter with the move d4 but we have to say there are several doctoral problems uh, in white's position there is also the backward pawn on d3 which could be warnable so so far a pretty pretty equal position we have now knight to f5 uh, by uh, ruby chess and in one game that i found in the database uh, between uh, ding glidden and anish giri ding immediately played aggressively uh, here with the move g4 which is actually not not even the most accurate way here to proceed as i said i found only this game in the database and ding hit the pawn move g4 immediately allowed here after a couple more moves um anish giri to regroup i think black is pretty solid here has a good activity with the minor pieces in the original game queen to c2 was played knight to d uh, knight to d7 d4 and here um uh, anish giri played a beautiful counter attack with the move e4 so in my opinion nothing gained here also for white so that's why after knight to f5 it seems so that this aggressive move g4 is simply a little bit too rushed so that's why i liked really here uh, this approach by ruby chess ruby chess played an interesting line it's knight to c3 what should black do here uh, this move knight to c3 is of course a preparation to play the move d4 and control further also the e4 square but 
if for instance black tries to play the move bishop to c5 to somehow not allow this move d4 by white then it gets very very complicated actually white should go here uh, with the move d4 immediately this wasn't played in the game but i wanted to show you again a little bit of theory here after move d4 for instance after e takes d4 now we of course don't pick up the pawn on d4 immediately now we have this intermediate attack against the bishop the bishop uh, has to drop back or you have to support it for instance you play b6 then we have this one knight to c5 uh, b takes c5 we take and even if black trades off many many pieces here the problem is now after bishop to f4 white would continue then uh, the game with the beautiful bishop pair and the c7 pawn is unprotected you can of course play something like king to d8 but then queenside castling with uh, ideas to play rook takes d4 i think are not uh, are not um, to defend anymore here for black so uh, after move knight to a4 you could maybe try uh, here bishop to a7 but then c5 is locking simply the bishop out we will eventually maybe uh, take out finally the pawn here if you take it then you lost the privilege of casting so in my opinion also not a good continuation anymore uh, here for black or you can in some lines even trap the bishop after move b6 you take then we trade off the queens and then b6 is simply trapping the piece so it's not working so that's why uh here from knight to c3 which is a very very important move that's the beauty about this stockfish line instead of this move g4 that we have seen uh by uh ding uh, ding against anish giri here we have c5 by ruby chess so ruby is now protecting the c5 uh the d4 square in a different way but still now stockfish shows very really the power of this side and stockfish plays first of all an interesting idea rook to a2 really really wild stuff and we are now in a completely new game this position has never been reached before this is simply a pure pure stockfish stockfish novelty stockfish line brutal blur attacking formation we have knight to d7 by ruby normal development g4 now now it's a different story now ruby just doesn't have such a great control uh with the minor pieces and also after move knight to d7 Seven, the knight is standing a little bit in the way of its own bishop we have knight to d6 and now stockfish plays a beautiful e4 this move locks simply the center simply creates i think a certain immobility in the center of the board creates i think a secure position in the center of the board which gives here uh white also flexibility to stay with the king in the center without castling white does not have to castle anymore and stockfish has now really mean plan to reshift the, the the rook here to g2 and attack the g file very really spectacular way here to proceed in the late opening we have bishop to e7 now we have g5 immediately stockfish is not even preparing rook to g2 in order to create its place now the aggressive g5 immediately let's see now what happens if you play f takes g5 this wasn't again played in the game but of course this is an interesting line what should uh white do now then rook to g2 is coming in a brutal way if you try to protect it somehow then uh, h4 is breaking the position now after rook to g7 bishop to f6 seems unpleasant here for white but white would simply continue here with rook to g6 you can maybe even attack uh the rook further but now in some lines for instance white can even sacrifice the exchange will eventually get this knight on this most beautiful square will maybe take out this pawn and i think this is a position that black can, can resign after a couple more moves there's simply too much pressure on life scores the bishops are aiming here so it's simply a one-way ticket in white's favor so that's why here are from g5 ruby didn't want didn't want to open any file simply secure the king by casting stockfish that plays now g takes f6 we have knight to f6 and now comes this mean plan by the fish rook to g2 of course uh, the follow-up is then rook to g1 and building a beautiful rook battery on the g file very very spectacular way here uh, to attack the position knight to f7 by ruby uh, bringing a new defender into the game rook to g1 forces now a reaction by black the move g6 and now stockfish plays a simply the most beautiful move first of all of this game i think plays now the amazing king to d2 as i said the king is not endangered here because the pawn structure in the center is simply blocked out that was the issue when uh, ruby just played now the move c5 in the first place uh, ruby doesn't have any more the flexibility to play something like c6 in order somehow to break uh, the position on the queen side the pawn structure on the queen side is fixed and stockfish is now searching for a beautiful path to even secure the king on a4 very very wild stuff how the fish is playing the game knight to h5 we have knight to uh 
uh, d5 controlling also the f4 square here by by stockfish we have bishop to f6 king to c2 and now bishop to d7 bishop to uh, e2 here by stockfish simply improving the position of the minor piece we have now an interesting counterattack here idea by ruby chest knight to f4 which I think many of us would mess up, but of course Stockfish is playing the most correct line, plays now the amazing bishop to f4. If you play, for instance, knight to f4, after e takes f4 and bishop to f4, the issue is uh, here this line, queen to f6, attacking the bishop, and then uh, the uh, the dark square diagonal is liberated now, so uh, white could have very, very a tough time to defend its position um, here here in this particular line. So that's why Stockfish plays, first of all, bishop to f4. Now we have e takes f4 by ruby chess. Again, you cannot take knight to f4 because of similar tactics, queen to f6 attacking the knight, and again threatening queen to b2 or queen to c3. So that's why after e takes f4, Stockfish is saying, okay, uh, this pawn is weak anyway, at least I'm preventing something like queen to f6 for a while, the knight is really, really the most powerful piece here, and Stockfish plays now uh, a beautiful flank attack move h4, is of course trying to play h5 and getting use of the g-file attack. We have bishop to e6, ruby chess attacks the uh, knight on uh, d5, and Stockfish continues now with very important move h5. This move is not allowing here Ruby Chess to take uh, the knight on d5 immediately. Because if that would have happened, this wasn't again played in the game, uh, then this line would be winning here for white. h takes g6 first. If you try to retreat with the bishop, we'll simply, of course, pick up the knight. If you pick up here the pawn uh, with uh, h takes g6, then rook takes g6 is, uh, I think, winning the game. Uh, you cannot play, of course, queen to f6. Uh, this po uh, bishop will be taken. The position is collapsing. Still, this bishop is also hanging. So it's really a messed up game. Uh, here for for black so that's why after move h5 uh, ruby had to play a strange move knight to h8 and this move is so far uh, protecting the g6 weakness i would say but this move is saying now also many many things it this move is saying the actually that the only flexible piece that could maybe attack the king when the king is marching to a4 as i said in the beginning stockfish will secure its own king here the only flexible piece that could maybe maneuver somehow maybe uh, this kind of a path i don't know maybe here here and then to play something like knight to b6 is of course the knight when we get the king on a4 no piece will ever be able to do that so that's why stockfish forced now uh, the knight on the edge of the board and has now a clear path for the king after h takes g6 h takes g6 now king to b3 and is stockfish is going for this move king to a4 where the king is going to be perfectly fine really really crazy crazy uh, attack here by stockfish we have bishop to d5 of course ruby is getting rid of the defender of dark squares because the queen to f6 is obviously ruby chess preparation but now after c takes d5 uh if you play even something like queen to f6 this is not working immediately because of e5 uh this would be then the best defensive idea uh, here for for white so that's why after c takes d5 we have queen to d6 ruby is at least for a while protecting the e5 square stockfish goes now with king to a4 and as i said there's simply nothing nothing that can attack anymore the king on this square if you try of course to move the knight again then you lose the battle around the square g6 so it's simply not working really, really beautiful beautiful um, aggressive ideas here by stockfish 16 rook from a to e8 we have knight to d2 bishop to d4 by ruby but now first of all an amazing counterattack. knight to c4 hitting the queen forcing the reaction of the queen and now uh, uh, stockfish plays rook to f1 is not allowing also f3 here by ruby we have rook to e7 bishop to g4 improvement of the minor piece we're searching for the best new square for the piece now the bishop can come on e6 or maybe here even to f5 uh, putting more pressure against the pawn on g6 we have rook to h7 bishop to f5 stockfish does it immediately goes for the g6 pawn we have rook to h4 now queen to uh, uh queen to c1 now stockfish is attacking uh, this uh, weak pawn on f4 we have bishop to e5 ruby chess protects it and now we have a rook to g1 the bishop cannot of course protect also the g1 square but also the pawn on e5 now stockfish is using this moment again uh puts more pressure against the pawn on g6 we have rook to h6 
bishop to e6, attacking the king. We have king to g7, and now look at this. This knight is simply cornered here. The rook is on a strange defensive place. This is not such a powerful battery here. So from this point on, I think it becomes a one-way ticket again in white's favor. So we have rook to g5. Stockfish attacks the, um, the bishop. Look how white's pieces are playing in perfect harmony. We have bishop to c7. Now e5. The rook is connected, of course, to the pawn and the knight is supporting it also. Great attack move here by uh, Stockfish. We have queen to e7. d6 so far is not possible because then also uh, the bishop is hanging. But Stockfish continues now with this idea. Attacks again the weak pawn on f4. We have f3. Stockfish goes with rook to f4. Uh, we have bishop to d8. And now after queen to e3, Stockfish is putting more pressure against the weak pawn on f3. Rook to f4. Queen takes f4. Rook to h4. And now finally Stockfish is grabbing the pawn. Has now still a beautiful attacking formation. And again, I know I'm boring a little bit, but again, notice that nothing can attack this amazing king on a4. Really, really, really wild stuff. B6, as I said, maybe uh, just an improvement of your structure, but you can never really open here somehow the position. Bishop to g4. We have queen to f7. We have e6. The Stockfish has, of course, these two connected passers. Uh, the goal is, of course, to simply push them further. We have queen to f3. Now Stockfish doesn't mind to trade off more pieces. Great, great uh, still uh, endgame ideas here with this two connected passage. Rook to f4, bishop to uh, e4, hitting now uh, simply the uh, weak pawn on g6. We have king to f6 and now Stockfish goes for this idea, attack simply uh, the knight. And the knight doesn't have good scores. Even if you protect it, then of course the king is far away from the action. The king is uh, far away uh, from this two pawn, then of course d6 is going to happen. So that's why after rook to h1, uh, ruby chess tried this way. We have e takes f7, ruby chess had to give up now a piece. Uh, Stockfish simply pushes this pawn further. We have rook to f7, and now another beautiful move. Bishop takes g6. If you play, of course, uh, here king to g6, then knight to e5. Uh, again, wins material, rook versus bishop, and some extra pawns is, of course, here completely, completely winning here for for white. So after bishop to g6, we had rook to f8, and in this particular position, ruby chess resigned. With the next for piece, I think it's a fair decision. We will simply now play bishop to e4, rook to h7, going for the pawns, uh, and maybe even further include the king into the game, but nothing can be done, I think, here for black. Pooh! Great game, interesting attack, I think, because the the rate opening in the beginning is really tough to handle with this idea c4. If you play d takes c4, then e3 uh, gets the pawn back. You're going into ideas of uh, maybe even the queen's gambit accepted. So many, many things can be played. But if you play this advanced idea with the move d4, really interesting choice here by Stockfish with the move b4. We have seen also the Michelle gambit, which can be met with the uh, Blumenfeld counter, uh, counter gambit or maybe with the ideas of the Banco gambit. So I think it's a line worth to study. Very, very interesting uh, performance also here by Stockfish, especially uh, with this idea to play uh, this move rook to, a, uh, rook to a2 in the beginning. That was, I think, the stunning idea. And then g4, rook to g2, and the h4 we have seen g5, and Stockfish had, had again a brutal, brutal attacking formation. So, okay, I hope that you enjoyed this game. I really enjoyed it a lot because I think uh, some of these methods I will try to apply at least maybe in some blitz bullet games maybe it's if it's working for me maybe i can prepare it also uh for a long, longer time format but this is the way uh, that we want to follow this top engine games because they're really giving us new opportunities new ideas in some openings but also of course in some sidelines of openings so okay uh, if you want to see more beautiful ideas by stockfish but also by some other top engines check out our comment chess games play by computer series Here's the link of our playlist, and uh, if you like this content, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. See you soon with some more videos, and what do we say in the end? Chess is the best, of course.